On the first day, God said, let there be light, and there was. Theologians refer to that as creation by fiat. Fiat is a Latin word that means to command or to order. So God ordered the light to appear, and it did. And then God separated the light from darkness. He called the light day, and he called the darkness night, which tells us that the earth began to rotate on its axis on the very first day. On the second day, God created an atmosphere that was able to, to sustain life. Now, most people get f confused when they read this part because the way that it's worded, we don't talk like that. And so we kind of get jumbled up as we're reading this passage of Scripture. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it very simple for you tonight. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this passage of Scripture. But as I'm reading it, I'm going to substitute the word space for the word firmament. Because that's actually a better translation. You see, the word firmament is actually translated from the Hebrew word rakia, and it's what we think of as space. That's why I'm going to substitute the word space for firmament. And then as I'm reading this passage, I'm actually going to stop at the end of each verse, and I'm going to illustrate what we just read on this whiteboard. So look at verses 6, 7, and 8, and remember that we're substituting the word space for the word firmament. And God said, let there be a space in the midst. Now, most of us don't use the word midst. What does that mean? Middle. And God said, let there be a space in the middle of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you were here last week, and if you weren't, I'm going to catch you up. The, wor the earth in the, in the beginning was completely surrounded by water. There were no mountain tops that were peaking up. It was, it was all water. There was no dry land anywhere. It's kind of like that movie Water World with Kevin Costner in it. Well, just kind of imagine, except there is no dry land anywhere. Now, I had a teenager come up to me last week, and they said, well, if it was water like that, how did it stay around the earth? And I said, well, it's the same way the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean stays around the earth. There's gravity there. So you have the earth, and this represents the earth, and all of this blue out here is the water. It was completely covered with water. And then God said, let there be space. And this space was in the middle of the waters. So what happened is there was a space that was created in the middle of the waters. Now I'm going to take out a little bit more. Let's do that so you can see. Does that make sense? And it divided the waters from the waters. Can everyone see that? Verse 7. And God made the space and divided the waters which were under the space... See that? From the waters which were above the space, and it was so. And God called the space, this part in here, heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, most scholars believe that the water that was above the space actually turned into a vapor. So literally you had a canopy, of, uh, a canopy of water vapor around it. And this canopy actually protected the earth and it made it very conducive to life. In fact, that's why so many of the patriarchs before Noah's flood lived for so long. They lived 700, 800, 900 years because you had this vapor around the earth. But I still want you to understand, at this point on day two, the earth is still completely covered with water. Does that make sense? So on the third day, what did God do? God created dry land upon the earth. Now, as I said, the earth in the very beginning was covered with water. There was no dry land. So what God did was he caused the mountains to rise and the valleys to sink and the waters drain to the lower parts of the earth. Look at Psalms chapter 104 verses 5 through 9. It says, you place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water. Water that covered even the mountains. No dry land as of yet. At your command on the third day, I added that part. The water fled at the sound of your thunder. It hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. 
Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. 